HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, and welcome to this edition of HCAM News. Tom Nappy at the anchor desk to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, we have scenes from the holiday festivities in Hopkinton, including the Hopkinton Drug Annual Open House and the Town Common Christmas Tree Lighting, plus Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. But first, here is a recap at what happened at this past Monday's special town meeting. Over 700 voters were in attendance for a special town meeting that took place on Monday, December 9th, due to a citizen's petition. Six articles were on the docket. Article 1 was the citizen's petition, which served the purpose of attempting to stop the Main Street Corridor project. The article looked to rescind the vote of Article 47 from the 2018 Annual Town Meeting, which allowed the town to utilize or negotiate for easements as part of the project. The group who filed the citizens' petition called the Main Street Alliance spoke first. Almost a year later, after the 2018 Town Meeting ended, the Main Street property owners got their First, look at the plan details. We were shocked to see the amounts of land and land rights that would be lost for the bicycle lanes and roadway improvements. Easements have long been discussed, but as John said, it was only in April of 2019, well after that pivotal 2018 annual meeting, that most property owners and businesses learned of the specific details about these easements. And it was only then that we gathered together and that the town started showing some concern. Due to Hopkinton's unchangeable hilly terrain, I call it the deal with the devil was made. Caving to the lure of coercive state funding was a mistake because it led to the mandating of what many experts believe to be dangerously designed bike lanes and the compromise of property rights of many. The Institute for Highway Safety did a study released in August this year that said separated bike lanes are crossed an average of six times per mile. In our three-quarter mile, we are crossed 10, 20, 30 times. Joe Markey then had a chance to present his side as a representative from the group of residents supporting the Main Street Corridor project. New pavement will improve safety traffic flow and enhance roadways. New drainage system is something people may not be aware of, is also included in the project. We have flooding and drainage issues in the downtown that will be addressed through this project. And traffic signalization will be improved for the safety and predictability of traffic flow and efficiency and timing. There will be increased visual cues and physical features to facilitate traffic calming and bicycle safety along the route. And finally, the aesthetic improvement to, will feature the historic nature of the area. If you think about it, since we moved here anyway, uh, every single of the major businesses along Main Street has invested in its property, the private entities. The one entity that hasn't put in is the town. This project is the way that we invest in our downtown, the same way that the residents and business owners along Main Street have already. Former select board member Todd Sestari amended to eliminate what he felt was unnecessary language from the article. This, and there's nothing binding. It, it basically, it, it's a suggestion, but it means nothing. There's nothing actionable here. Uh, there's nothing binding here. And rather than churn up conversation for the next two hours around components of that, uh, I'd like to amend that we strike that component. The amendment passed a standing vote 452 to 305. 
dozens of citizens stepped up to the mic to state their beliefs. 90 properties listed on the census map block by block and lot only. Private property owners were not even notified there was going to be a vote at the May 2018 town meeting. It's just not safe at all downtown. We've got an extremely wide crosswalk at the Korean church that goes to the corner of Hayden Row and Main Street that is treacherous. We have um, an intersection at, at where CVS is, Hockney Gas. It's just not safe. So I'm voting to move forward with this project and voting no on Article 1. The article to rescind the Main Street Corridor project would fail. 504 residents voted in favor of continuing the project, while 278 voted to stop the project. Hopkinton Hillers Hockey got their season underway at Pirelli Veterans Arena in Franklin against home team Medfield. Here's a look at what happened. On Thursday, December 12th, Hopkinton Hillers Boys Varsity Hockey took on Medfield in their season opener. It was all defense in the first period and it was scoreless after the first 15 minutes. In the second period, the scoring was fast and furious. Sean Walsh pulled off some smooth moves just shy of 90 seconds into the period. He's turned up into the neutral zone off the stick of Lawson. Sean Walsh catches up with it. Walsh coming up the ice quickly. A great move there. Backhander goal! Sean Walsh makes it one to nothing Hillers! Wow, what a move! Well, he knew they weren't going to be able to hold his speed in check for too long. He's usually very good in the power play, taking it end to end. And Definitely showed off the skills there. Medfield struck back a little less than three minutes later. On the near side now, Sheamus. Warriors take over. Here's a breakaway. Backhander, turn away. Wide open net, and it's in. Sam Palmer evens this game at one. The game wasn't tied for long at all after freshman Pavit Mera had an opportunity. Both teams have a man in the box. Four on four. Here comes Mara. Back in her in! Hello, Pavit Mara! The freshman makes it two to one! Oh, what a spectacular way to score your first goal. That was a really nice move. On the backhand. It's always tough for a goalie to pick that up. You're not quite sure where it's going to go when it leaves it. Stick. Medfield retied the game a little less than two minutes later. In there by Cam Gota. Medfield with the man advantage for the next 40 seconds or so. Here comes Parker, and that's it! Two to two, what a shot! The goal made it a two to two game with 8.36 left in the second. That's how the score stayed until the third with 10.24 left. Sheamus working it up the ice. And he'll meet up with two Warriors in the corner. Out in front, Quinlan, and in! Will, Will Quinlan was just waiting for it. Mira got down there, he was able to fight in that corner, get that puck out, and put it right on the stick. Will Quinlan with the go-ahead goal to make it a 3-2 game, and that is all the Hillers needed as they came away with a win in game number one of the season against a very good Bedfield team on the road at Pirelli Veterans Arena, the Hillers start the season off with two points. Hillers boys basketball hosted Dedham in their season opener this past Friday. The Hillers took the game 59 to 44 and started off the season in the win column. Senior forward Elon Rosen put up a team high 16 points and racked up eight rebounds. Senior guard Travis Finfrock added 11 points and added four assists for Hopkinton. The Hillers had eight different scoring contributors in the game. Hopkinton starts off the season 1-0. and oh. The Hiller girls team also started off their season in the win column. They took care of Dedham on the road 47-40. Hopkinton Drug and Cardan Gift hosted their 31st annual holiday open house. Here's a look at the festivities. Nicole, are you? Oh my goodness, let's see that face paint. Wow. 
That is very cool. You guys still having some fun? Yes. All right, good, good, good. Merry Christmas. This past weekend, holiday festivities took place throughout Hopkinton. At Hopkinton Drug and the Card and Gift Store, they hosted their annual holiday open house. The event featured numerous activities, including caricature drawings. I'm Sam. Sophia. You guys have a good time today? Yeah. yeah. So, so what's happening over here right now? Um, um, they're doing like pictures of you, of like, of, caricatures. yeah, like characters of, yeah. Cool. What else did you guys do today? Did you hang we, out? We got a Christmas out? tree. Oh, very nice. At Western Nurseries. At Western right Nurseries, right yeah. Right Terrific. Yeah. All right, what did you see here at uh, the Hopkinton Drug today? Um, we saw some mini boos, like, like this one. And um, this, and some um, toy cars. Are you, you guys talk to Santa yet? Nope. No, not yet. Uh, okay, what are you going to ask for for Christmas? Um, American Girl Dog. P PS4. Come on down to our 31st annual holiday open house. There's all kinds of fun, games, and entertainment for kids and adults. Santa's here, face painting, crafts, and most importantly, we do our uh, raffle for Project Just Because. We sell tickets. There's some great raffle baskets, which you'll see just in a minute to my left. And all the money goes directly to help families in need. Wait, how was the uh, turnout today? Turnout was fantastic today. We had all kinds of families coming on through, people having lots of fun, being entertained, uh, eating some of the snacks, and just having a great holiday time. Jojo the Magician was also there to entertain. Uh, so the thing is with cards, playing cards, if you, if you shake them, they can start to change. So this is a very well-known card. The Queen of Spades, if I just shake it, watch. It can start to change. Does that look all right? That's awesome. Oh, wow, thank you. And the weird thing is that if you just give it a, it can change right back. So. Where is the little red ball? Where is it? Coat. Where? In your hand. Oh, that's where the eyeball is. Silly. Ah! <laughs> Give yourselves a round of applause. Or, you know, watch that one. I know you got a little scared. Oh, this is a, this is a funny one. I've been working on my comedy, some jokes. I did. Um, I asked my mom if I was funny. She said, Yeah, funny looking. I was like, Wow, thanks, mom. Um, so <laughs> I decided to come up with jokes. Uh, so, who cleans the ocean floor? A mermaid. Ha! I, they're, they're written on pieces of paper. Um, um, what do you call a crocodile detective? An alligator. Yeah, I mean investigator. Um, oh, why do people sit in the corner when they're cold? Because it's 90 degrees. All right, I have a construction joke, but I'm still working on it. Um, the other day a man got hit in the head with a soda can. It's all right, it was a soft drink. Um, what do you call a fish with no eyes? A fish. Oh, yeah. Yeah, good one. Um, uh, yeah, I have a few, but the thing is, I have so many of these newspapers, and it's so, it's so, like, all these pieces of paper, it's so annoying to just carry around. So I might as well just have the whole newspaper here with me. Does that make sense? Does that not make sense? I don't know. You can clap if you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very good. Kids had an opportunity to tell Santa Claus what they wanted for Christmas. You do like blue, okay. And you were being a good boy for your mommy? Okay, very good, very good. Well, you were very brave to come over and see me, my old friend. Well, Avery and Leo, I look forward to seeing you on Christmas Eve. Now, are you going to leave me any cookies? Mm -hmm. What kind of cookies? I don't know. You don't know? Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip are some of my favorite. Very good. Tell me, dear, is there any presents you'd like to have for Christmas? Would you like to have them? Oh, very good choice. All right, all right. What would you like for Christmas, Olivia? Merry Christmas. You like Paw Patrols? Oh my goodness, we love making the Paw Patrols at the North Pole. That's a good choice. Oh, you like the players? What's your favorite color now, Nora? Um, pink. Pink is an excellent choice, my friend. Very good. Now, are you being a good girl for Daddy? You're eating all your vegetables. 
Oh, good job, good job. Well, we're very, very busy here at Hopkinton Trug. It's been a fantastic day. We started right at 12, meeting children from all over Hopkinton and Milford and, and some wonderful children from all these communities. We're having a great time here, of course. In fact, there's even a magician here. I saw him do a little bit of magic. So that was good, yeah. So what has been the uh, most asked for toy today? Well, you know, it depends on the age. Uh, some children, but Legos are always very popular. Uh, unicorns have become quite popular in the last couple of years, taking over butterflies, as I was surprised to learn. Um, let's see, uh, many of the children are asking for, uh, uh, you know, scooters, skateboards, uh, rollerblades, hoverboards are very popular as well. And I've even gotten a few requests for Barbies, which, as you know, we've been making Barbies at the North Pole for a long time. Thank you very much, Santa. Have You're, a Merry Christmas. You're very welcome. Ho, ho, ho. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of healthcare options. Welcome back to HCAM News. The annual Christmas tree lighting took place at the Town Common. Here's a look. On Saturday night at the Town Common, the annual tree lighting took place. Before the lighting, Hopkinton Scouts entertained the crowd with some Christmas tunes. You having a good time with the town common today? Yeah. Did you get up there and sing? Yeah. All right. Who'd you say with the Girl Scouts? Uh, yeah. Awesome. Are you excited for the tree lighting? Yes. All right. <laughs> Good time today? Yeah! 
How'd you like the tree lighting? Were you singing up there? Yes! I did on the solos up there, kind of. What songs did you sing? Uh, uh, Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, Here Comes Santa Claus, Frosty the Snowman. Alright, you excited for Christmas? Yes! What, what'd you ask Santa for? Um, Legos. Oh, I think I, I asked him for uh, Fitbit. about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget you could stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website hcam.tv as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website for the latest happenings in our community and check out the Hopkinton community calendar to take a look at upcoming events in town. If you have a Hopkinton related video photo or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv with your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and happy holidays, everyone. Over 700 voters were in attendance for a special town meeting that took place on Monday, December 9th, due to a citizen's petition. Six articles were on the docket. Article 1 was the citizen's petition, which served the purpose of attempting to stop the Main Street Corridor project. The article looked to rescind the vote of Article 47 from the 2018 Annual Town Meeting, which allowed the town to utilize or negotiate for easements as part of the project. The group who filed the citizen's petition called the Main Street Alliance spoke first. Almost a year later, after the 2018 Town Meeting ended, the Main Street property owners got their First, look at the plan details. We were shocked to see the amounts of land and land rights that would be lost for the bicycle lanes and roadway improvements. Easements have long been discussed, but as John said, it was only in April of 2019, well after that pivotal 2018 annual meeting, that most property owners and businesses learned of the specific details about these easements. Joe Markey then had a chance to present his side as a representative from the group of residents supporting the Main Street Corridor project. New pavement will improve safety traffic flow and enhance roadways. New drainage system is something people may not be aware of, is also included in the project. We have flooding and drainage issues in the downtown that will be addressed through this project and traffic signalization will be improved for the safety and predictability of traffic flow and efficiency and timing. There will be increased visual cues and physical features to facilitate traffic calming and bicycle safety along the route. And finally, the aesthetic improvement to, will feature the historic nature of the area. If you think about it, since we moved here anyway, uh, every single of the major businesses along Main Street has invested in its property, the private entities. The one entity that hasn't put in is the town. This project is the way that we invest in our downtown, the same way that the residents and business owners along Main Street have already. Former select board member Todd Sestari 
amended to eliminate what he felt was unnecessary language from the article. This, and there's nothing binding. It, it basically, it, it's a suggestion, but it means nothing. There's nothing actionable here. Uh, there's nothing binding here. And rather than churn up conversation for the next two hours around components of that, uh, I'd like to amend that we strike that component. The amendment passed a standing vote 452 to 305. Dozens of citizens stepped up to the mic to state their beliefs. 90 properties listed on the census map block by block and lot only. Private property owners were not even notified there was going to be a vote at the May 2018 town meeting. It's just not safe at all downtown. We've got an extremely wide crosswalk at the Korean church that goes to the corner of Hayden Row and Main Street that is treacherous. The article to rescind the Main Street Corridor project would fail. 504 residents voted in favor of continuing the project, while 278 voted to stop the project. Article 2 was requesting $500,000 for design and engineering services for Hopkinton High School. So Article 2 is requesting immediate funding to permit the design and engineering services that would be performed prior to the end of this current school year. So if we are able to get the design engineering study done, we would be able to put that project out to bid. The article passed overwhelmingly 404 to 6. Article 3 was asking for $4.5 million for the construction and renovation at Hopkinton High School. On floors two and three, there would be six additional classrooms stacked one on top of the other. In that basement part of the building, the first floor of the building, that part would be left open. Article three also passed 375 to seven. Article four seeked $2 million to add modular classrooms at Elmwood School. Uh, and the other thing about these modular classrooms is that they are movable. So in the event that we are invited in and uh, we have a new Elmwood school or an addition or renovation, something with the Elmwood school, and we need those classrooms elsewhere to do some work on the middle school or to do work on the Marathon Elementary School, we will own those classrooms. The article passed 330 to 11. Article 5 seeked $3 million dollars for modular classrooms at Hopkins School. The article passed 304 to 6. Article 6 was the final article of the night. The article via citizens petition seeked to accept Legacy Farms Road North as a town roadway. Of Legacy Farms Road North that is still considered a private road. And for that reason, the insurance for the